Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Good morning. <clears throat> Welcome to Morning Cup of Jesus. I'm your host, Minister Edward Broom. Without further ado, let's get right into it, shall we? Father God in heaven, it's in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you for another day, Lord God. Your, your grace is never in. Your mercy is is undeserved, Lord God. It's abounding, Lord God, it's, and it's and it's brand new every morning, Lord God. And I thank you, God. I pray, God, Lord, now that you would uh you would clear my head, Lord God, of any other stuff I got going on. Clear my heart, Lord, of anything you know that's in there, Lord. <sighs> Forgive all my sins, something I might have forgotten, Lord God. I might not have acknowledged, Lord God. But God, I want to, to hear what you're saying this morning, Lord. I want to receive it, retain it, and relay it to the people in the name of Jesus. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening, Lord God. I know that the, the uh, commentary is already prepared, but God, I also know that you can still speak outside of, of, of my guidelines, outside of my boundaries, outside of, 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 of what I've laid out, Lord God. And I pray that you have your way this morning, Lord. Give the people what you want them to have. Use me as the, the messenger who delivers your word, God. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. All right. Today's scripture is coming from... Oh, yeah. Let's see what page we are. Today's scripture is coming from Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 40. <clears throat> 
when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father. <laughs> Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous, the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when do we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? When do we see you a stranger and take you in or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, and as much as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. May God bless the readers, the hearers, and especially the doers of his holy word. Who or what are you doing it for? That's the big question. Can we do a lot of good things? And there are, I'm using this phrase, there are a lot of self-righteous people. They say that their good deeds make them righteous. Or what they give to other people makes them righteous. How they how they talk to other people makes them righteous. Uh, uh, the, you know, how, how they treat, even how they treat other people makes them righteous but that's not true our righteousness is like a filthy rag that's what the lord god says it says our righteousness is like a filthy rag isaiah 64 verse 6 i think isaiah 64 verse 6 so if our righteousness is like filthy rags that means no matter how much we do in this lifetime in these little hundreds and some years or how many years you get to live. It will never equate to righteousness because you're born into sin. And I see some people who say, that's why I don't believe in all of that old God stuff, that Jesus stuff, because everything I do ain't wrong. I don't know about, I see somebody saying, I saw some. I saw someone post on, on social media saying, we don't supposed to be living our life like that, sorry for all the things we did, regretting the things that we did. Why not? Why don't you? I mean, the, their righteousness is 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 self righteousness because they 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 now they say, well, I'm good because I do these things here, but he's bad because he does those things there. In the eyes of Adolf Hitler, uh, uh he was righteous just like you. His and they say, well, the government determines who's right and wrong. Guess what? In that in that country, in that government, they thought it was right to kill the Jews. And Adolf Hitler thought it was right to kill all the Jews. His, his government thought it was right to kill all the Jews. So does that mean that the government decided that he was right and they were right? No. You can't create your own righteousness and then say that somebody else is unrighteous based on your standards. That's the problem with people who say, I don't believe in that Jesus stuff and that God stuff and that Bible stuff. They, they, they are, they're equating uh, uh, this life to, to, to them being a God in their own eyes. They get to choose what's righteous and, and, and what's unrighteous. But that's not the case, though. That's, that's, that's fairy tale land they're living in. And they're going to have to answer for that. Hopefully, hopefully they'll come to God before it's too late. You know, I don't wish they hurry up and go on and go, go to hell. I don't, you know, I, I hope that everybody comes to God, bow down and surrender to him. And then he wipe out all that other stuff, all that self-righteousness. 
So the question, who are you, who or what are you doing it for? Is it for yourself? Is it for your own righteousness? Or, or when you do a good deed or a give someone some money or lend, a gift or lend someone a hand, what's the reason for your actions? Is it, is it, uh, if you seek to gain glory from the people or to be noticed, Jesus said, that's the only reward that you will receive. Matthew chapter six, when he talk about the, uh, the hypocrites on his corner blowing a horn, getting there by attention before they do something. Said he, Jesus said, that's the only reward they're going to get right there. Those people noticing them, and some that for some people that's enough. See, for some people, getting glory from men, from mankind, that's enough. For some people, gaining um, wealth and honor and respect and glory on this earth, that's enough for them. And it don't have to be as much as being the president of the of, of the country or the king of the kingdom. It could just be among a group of 10 people. They just want to be the best among their group of 10 people. That's what they want to do. And so it's enough for them. It's not enough for me. I don't want the glory of the world. I, I, don't, I don't want the world to say you did good, Ed. And I, I tell my wife, I want God to say, well done, Ed. I tell my wife this, and she, and she, uh, and when I said to her, she was looking at me all crazy and stuff. I said, "Look, ain't nobody gonna be able to say Ed uh, was such a great person, and and he uh, he never he never he never you know they use the word judge. Everybody use the word judge. He never judged me for me getting high. He never judged me for me um for me having five girlfriends. He never judged me for me cussing people out. He never judged me for." beating on my own girlfriend. He never judged me for stealing. He never judged me for lying. He never judged me for drinking and driving. Nobody's going to be able to say that because they're they going to say, Ed judged me. That's the term that they use. I'm not a judge. But when people get in their head that God is the judge and we are just the witnesses, we are just witnesses for the trial because God going to call all kind of witnesses. You're going to say, I ain't do that. He's going to say, bring him forward. Did he do this? Yeah, he did it. And he's going to try to deny it. And God going to show you right there on the video screen. I'm just making, you know, kind of paraphrasing stuff. He's going to show you, look, you did this. See, you know you did that. Why are you lying? You know? But we are just witnesses. Nobody's going to be able to say, I didn't tell them that they was wrong. See what I'm saying? You know, when I pass away or what have you, or anything like that of that nature. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's not in me. Self-righteousness is not in me. I don't dictate what's right and wrong. I go by the Holy Bible. That's the only guideline to what's right and wrong. And so I'm not going to tell people something to get their approval or to gain their approval to get, to get noticed by them, to be the greatest among them. And, and I, that ain't what I want. God and God, God giving me something that I'm accepting, but God know I, I say, Lord, I, I didn't want no, uh, God, I say, I still say, often say this because, uh, I often say, well, I, I don't like being self-employed or well, I don't want to be self-employed and this and that. I say, it's too much work. You don't give yourself any rest. Then they say, you got to find a balance. I can't find a balance. I can't leave something undone. You know, I'm, uh, doing electrical work Monday through Friday, Sundays on my still do a little. I mean, Saturday might do a little, and on Sunday, after church, I'm going to try to finish up what I'm working on. And so, that's I, that's just me. I ain't saying anything wrong with it. But what I'm saying, not not to bring that to a short story. And so, what I'm saying is, uh, I'm not trying to be the king of the world. I'm not trying to be in control of everything. I don't mind being under leadership, under authority. That's me. Now, God has given me some authority. God has put me in a position of leadership, but I'm not one to try to be the uh, the king of the world, the king of the castle. Jesus is the king, and I'm always underneath him. I don't want to ever be put up there on a pedestal or, or, or equated or compared to Jesus in any type of way. I mean, even though the Bible say, uh, uh, the Bible says, uh, tells the men to love their wives like Jesus loved the church. See, now the Bible tells that, hey, man, 
you hey you husband treat your wife like Jesus treat the church and he also tell the wives hey treat your husband like you treat Jesus and so that's about the closest I want to get to that rising up stuff right there to that being exalted stuff and doing this and that but as you look at it Jesus was really a servant you know Jesus was really a servant so in all your in all your power and all your leading all this you lead by serving, you lead as your servant. Jesus was serving, you know what I'm saying? And so, um, and so, if we, even if we do want to rise to power, we got to understand that our rise to power is by serving. Not so you can serve and serve and then be the king of the throne, just so you can serve and serve. And that's how and the people following you because you're leading them in the manner that they're supposed to serve, you know what I'm saying? I might be twisting my words up and stuff, but, but that's what I'm trying to tell you, though. Um, and so when you're doing things, if you're doing it so you can gain something on this earth, gain power, gain the, the kingship, or gain or get or they owe you a favor, or they or you or they gotta pay you back money or something like that, um, and, and if you're doing it so that you can be noticed, and I, that's the only reward you're gonna receive. If you're doing it so they can, so you can get something back, that's not gain either. Uh, Jesus says in Luke, that was Matthew chapter six there. Uh, but in Luke chapter six, Jesus still said the same thing. He said, um, if you if you give so they can pay you back, what do you gain? What credit is the what what do you get from that? He says, do good to to those who do wrong to you as well. Not just to those who do good to you. You know what I'm saying? Uh and that's a hard thing for some people to do good to people who hurt them, to people who harm them. The thing about me is I, I it ain't about me doing good to people who uh who who hurt me and do it's just that I can't do too much good to people who I know are doing wrong with what I'm giving them. Uh, if uh, at one point I had an extra car sitting out there, I'm like, man, I ain't even driving this car. I just sitting here, can't go no more than about thirty miles an hour. It's just a little town car, you know what I'm saying? And I wanted to give it to somebody, you know what I'm saying? Because my daughter Leah, my oldest daughter Leah, was here. She didn't want to drive a car. Like, drive the car, girl. Learn how to drive. Get your license. She's still in school. But she left before she got a license and stuff. I said, drive, get your license. Drive the car. I'm going to fix it up. Make it look good. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, Emma came and uh, I washed the car. Had a detail. Filled it up. Then I filled it up with gas. Got everything. Just t- put title in her name. She ain't never drive the car. I said, the car is around the corner. I mean, we just ain't got room to park it here. Go around there and get the car. And drive it, man. She ain't never gonna get the car. Maybe one time she drive my car instead of driving the car that I put in her name. You know, and probably drove me to car too. But but I was trying to get a car to somebody at one point. And um uh, I wanted to give it to somebody who was um uh, you know what I'm saying, in Christ, doing something for the Lord Jesus. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't doing it for no personal gain or getting nothing back. I just wanted to do it to somebody for somebody who was in the Lord. <laughs> And, and, and so, and uh, but I, I never got the opportunity to give it to anybody. You know what I'm saying? And um, even people try to buy another other car from. I'm like, nah, it ain't really worth you buying, bro. You, I'm just a trash car. If you only, if you need a car to get it back and forth to work, this ain't the car for you. And that was the second car. I don't have to talk about cars, but but it says uh, if you want to do good to those who do good to you, oh. So that's what I was saying, man. I wanted, I wanted, so yeah, that's what I was saying about the car. I almost lost my train of thought. So, and I don't know why I started talking about the cars. But anyway, I'm saying this right here. I be wanting to do good to people, whether good or bad, but I just concerned about what they're going to do with what I'm giving them. And so, even, so if, say, say if somebody getting ready to rob, if somebody need a getaway car to rob a bank or something, I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel right giving them a car. You know what I'm saying? Give, giving them a car, knowing that what they're going to do with it. They're trying to rob a bank. They need a getaway car. You know, it's the same thing with, with anything, with with money, with, with anything. You know, I, if I know that you're going to do something with it, and we talked about this in the men's meeting, if I know what you're going to do with it, and, and, it's, and it's against the word of God, I don't feel right giving it to you because I feel like I'm enabling you, encouraging you, or empowering you to commit sin, you know, I, I, it just don't it don't fly right with me. It don't feel right with me. It don't my it don't resonate. It 
It it can't it don't sit right in my spirit. And so I don't mind giving, but as long as I you know as I I have a conscience. Uh, and so if I think that you're doing something wrong with it, I can't give it. And so I pay by people, you know, I get them stuff. And now if I now I, I don't ask them what they about to do with it. Now if they holding up a sign say I'm homeless, I need a bottle of whiskey. Give me three dollars. I'm not gonna give you three dollars <laughs> because I don't want you to have a bottle of whiskey. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, and, and, and so it's it, that's how I am with giving. I try to do good, but and so if I if I give somebody some, I need some gas. I need some gas. Got a sign that need some gas. I give them ten dollar, five dollar, twenty dollar, and I go around the corner, look over across the street, and they going in, in in the liquor store or they over there on the corner buying buying some dope or something. Next time, my conscience ain't gonna let me give them anything. If I ever see them again. My conscience will not let me get them anything because they lying for one, like they're trying to buy something with it. Number two, they spend it to, to get to commit another sin. And so that's just how I am when it comes to giving. I don't mind giving, but I want to give for, to the right people for the right reason. Now it says, uh, now listen to this. <clears throat> if you're trying to do something to get some gain back from somebody, you're really not getting any gain. You know, that's what Jesus says. Your gain is from the Father and your labor is not in vain. When you're doing something and you're not trying to get gain back, that's where you're when you're not trying to get something in return or owe you a favor or repay you. Your gain is from God. Your gain is from the Father, and your labor is not in vain. Therefore, whenever you have the opportunity, Galatians chapter six, verse ten. Whenever you have the opportunity, do good to all people, especially, especially. The family of believers. It, it, the Bible, the New King James says, the household of faith. I ain't want to put down the believers because a lot of people believe, but they're not part of the family. Uh, even 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 the demons believe and they tremble. They believe that the Son of God is the Son of God. They believe in Jesus and they tremble, but they haven't placed their faith in Him. So they're not of the family of believers. They're not of the household of faith. He says. The scripture says, do good to everybody, especially the household of faith, especially the family of believers. When you do good to the children of God, for the sake of God, you are doing good to the kingdom of God. When you do good to the children of God and it's for the sake of God, and it's not for any type of any uh, 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 underlying reasons or what they call a... Uh, I can't think of the phrase on my tongue, ulterior motive. There's no ulterior motive involved, and it, it, it's for the kingdom of God. You know what I'm saying? And uh, no one who does good for the kingdom of God will go unnoticed and unrewarded by the Lord. Proverbs 15 and 3, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch over the good and the evil. God is looking at the good that people are doing. God is looking at the evil that people are doing. God looking at your heart while you doing it. You know what I'm saying? God looking at your mind while you doing it. He know why you're doing it, what you're trying to get in return. God knows. Jesus says in Matthew 6, your your uh, uh, uh your father in heaven who, who sees you, he sees you do something in secret. He will reward you openly. You think now Jesus might be talking about doing something good in secret and being rewarded in something good. In the open by the Father, guess what? What if you do something bad in secret? Then the Lord gonna reward you some bad openly, bad in public. See it both ways. Jesus, Jesus said, "You whatever you do in secret, is you gonna receive it in public." You know. And now we can't dictate the terms by which this takes place. We can't say, "Well, I'm gonna give this right here so that I can get this later on in public." Now God decides that He's reading your heart and seeing. That all you want is glory from people. And you want glory. Let God give you glory. And let him be the one who honor you versus you trying to honor yourself. And it says, scripture says, let another man honor you, not your praise from your own lips. And so God is watching over everything. If your reason for your action is Jesus, the kingdom of God, God's glory, or God's family, if, the, if one of these or any of these is your reason, the reason what you, that you do anything is for Jesus, is for the God's glory, for, for God's kingdom, or for God's family, the children of God, then 
and you are sincere about it and you're being honest with yourself according to the scriptures, guess what? There is no better reason to do what you're doing. If any of this is your reason and you are sincere and true and honest about it, there's no better reason. And then in due time, you shall reap what you sow. In due season, you shall reap what you sow if you don't give up. So I'm here to encourage you this morning to keep on running for the Lord, keep on working for the Lord and serving the Lord, walking with the Lord and doing things for the Lord and for the Lord's children and for the Lord's family and for the Lord's body and for the Lord's kingdom and for the Lord's glory. And you will receive your just reward. Your due, in due season, you shall receive your reward if you don't give up. The scripture says, if you don't faint, in due season, you shall reap what you've been sowing all this time. So continue in your faith, continue in your serving, continue in your strength, continue in your walk with the Lord. And everything's going to work out for the good. Just have patience and have faith and trust in God. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your word this morning, God. Thank you, God, that you brought it all together, Lord God. Thank you, God, that you got me through it this morning, Lord God, even though I might have had a little slight headache, Lord God. But God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Let today be a great day, God. Let this word resonate in our hearts and in our minds. Help us to, to walk on it, to, to, to help us to spread and to talk about it, Lord God, and to, to apply it to our lives, to our marriage, to our uh, to our relationships, Lord God, to, to, to our family, to our finances, to, to everything, God. Help us apply your word, God, and use it for your glory, for your kingdom, for your children, for the body of Christ. And God, help us to keep the faith in you and not, and not, and not take our eyes off the prize, which is waiting on us in paradise. We give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. All right. All right. That's it for morning cup of Jesus. <clears throat> if the Lord is willing, we're going to be right back here tomorrow morning around the same time. Amen. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. God bless you. Enjoy your day. Oh, oh, oh.